Today we're going to be learning to use the binomial distribution function BinomDist on Excel. We are looking at a jury selection problem. Twelve jurors are to be randomly selected from a population in which 80% of the jurors are Mexican American. If we assume that jurors are randomly selected without bias, and if we let X equal the number of Mexican American jurors among 12, then X is a random variable. It is a numerical value that depends entirely on chance. The possible values of x are 0 to 12. We will make a table that lists the values of x and calculate its probabilities. In cell A1, type x. In cells A2 to A14, type the numbers 0 to 12. In cell B1, type P of X, and then click in cell B2. Come to F of X, choose Statistical, scroll down to Binome Dist. We are going to be calculating the probability of exactly zero Mexican American jurors, exactly one, exactly two, and so on up to exactly 12 Mexican-American jurors. Number sub s is the number of successes, click on 0. Number of trials is 12, so type in the number 12. Probability of success is 80%, so type in 80% or 0.8. Cumulative, in this case type in false. That is how we get the probability of exactly 0 Mexican-American jurors. Say OK. Once you've gotten the first cell filled in, grab the fill handle and either drag or double click to fill them all in. Now we would like to format those cells. Right click, come down to Format Cells, choose Number, use your up arrow to choose three decimal places and say OK. Now that we have that, we want to make a relative frequency distribution. Come to the Insert ribbon, click on Column, choose the first one, we can actually leave the space between the bars in this case because this is a discrete probability distribution. The only thing we really need to do is relabel the axis because it's now going from 1 to 13 and it should go from 0 to 12. Select Data. Edit the horizontal category or x-axis labels. Highlight 0 to 12. Say OK. Say OK again. And there is our probability distribution. There's no problem with the space between the bars because this is a discrete probability distribution. Now we want to actually calculate some probabilities. So we can just move this. The first thing I would like to do is I would like to show you again how to calculate the probability that x is equal to 7. We're going to come to f of x. We're going to go to binome dist. The probability of exactly 7 successes, number of successes 7, number of trials 12, probability of success 0.8 and because we want exactly seven successes we're going to type in the word false or zero. Once again we want to hi highlight these cells, format them to three decimal places. Okay. Now what we would like to do is calculate the probability that x is less than or equal to seven. There are two ways to do this. One is that we can use our auto sum. Less than or equal to 7 means the probability of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7.
we just used our auto sum feature to find that. Well, I would also like to use the Excel function to do that. So how do we do that? Click in the cell, come back to Binom Dist. Number of successes is 7 once again. Number of trials is 12. Probability of success is still 0.8, but this time instead of try typing in false, we're going to type in true, or instead of 0, we're going to type in 1. Notice that we get the same answer either way. Well, what if we wanted the probability that x was greater than or equal to 7? The Excel function binom dist only has two choices, 0 or false and true. 0 gives you the probability of exactly 7 successes. True gives us seven or fewer successes. So how would we go and figure out the probability of seven or more successes? Seven or more. Well, one way we could do it is to use our auto sum again. And seven or more means seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, or twelve. We can auto sum and say enter. But how can we use binom dist in order to do that? Well, let's think about it. Seven or more is the opposite of six or less. I highlighted them in two different colors to show that to you. Seven or more is everything but six or less. So if we can calculate the probability of six or less, that's six, twelve, 0.8 true. That's the piece in yellow, but we want the piece in green. What we know about this distribution is that it adds up to 1. It's a valid probability distribution which adds up to 1. So we can come here and type in 1 equals 1 minus binom dist. And notice that we get the same answer. What if we wanted to know the probability that x was between 6 and 9 inclusive? Well, this is really what we want, 6, 7, 8, or 9. We can use our auto sum to get this. Or we can think through how to use binome dist. Well, if we do binom dist for 9, 12, point 0.8 true, that is actually the probability that x is less than or equal to 9. That's not what we wanted. We wanted x between 6 and 9. So we want to subtract out from 0 to 5.
So we're going to come over here where we did binome dist for 9, and right after it, we're going to come up to the function bar, and right after it, we're going to click right behind it and type a minus sign. Click on f of x and go to binome dist again. Well, let's look in yellow at what we want to leave out. We want to leave out from 5 all the way down to 0, so we're going to type in 5, 12, 0.8, true. Notice that we get the same answer either way. Now, it may seem to you that using the auto sum is easy enough and that we shouldn't bother with binome disk. But let's say, for example, instead of having 12 jurors, we were mailing out 500 packages via UPS. Do you really want to make the chart that goes from 0 up to 500, make all those probabilities and have to add things up? Doesn't sound like fun to me. If I wanted to do that, and I had that n was equal to 500, and let's suppose for the moment that UPS is claiming a 90% on time rate. Suppose I wanted to calculate the probability that at least 450 of my packages were on time. Truly, I don't want to have to go and make this whole chart. 450 or more being on time is the opposite of 449 or less being on time. So we can come to binome dist and say 449, 500 trials, probability of success is 0.9, cumulative is true. And now we need to go back and fill in that 1 minus. Now we would like to format that to three decimal places. Right click, Format Cells, Number, Three Decimal Places. You can see that it's much easier to use binome disk than to generate this whole chart, and we are done for today.